I'm Grace Neutral, a tattoo artist and activist. I don't know if they're more freaked out by my tattoos or the fact that I'm wearing a Burberry coat in a spa. I'm interested in ideas of alternative beauty and pushing our boundaries of positive body image. And you could never wear makeup again. How oh. would you feel? I will die. To me, the human body is a beautiful thing in all its forms. What Gracie could have looked like if she didn't fuck her face off. I've travelled to South Korea, where, amazingly, tattooing is illegal. I'm going to explore their $6 billion domestic beauty industry and K-pop's influence on Korean beauty ideals. So we're here in Myeongdong in Seoul, which is basically like the epicenter of beauty. This is where everyone comes to get their beauty products. As you can see, it's heaving, it's crazy, the streets are so full. Every other shop seems to be a makeup shop. Korea has one of the world's fastest growing and technically advanced beauty industries. South Korean women spend more than twice as much of their income on makeup and beauty products than American women, while men spend more on beauty products than anyone else in the world. Skincare and beauty product advertising is everywhere, with K-pop stars and K-soaps pushing the latest cosmetic trends. There's an unparalleled emphasis in Korean society on looking good and having perfect skin. Young South Koreans and increasingly China's beauty tourists flock to this area, lured by skincare and makeup products dubbed K-beauty. You come here just for fashion or do you come here to buy makeup, skin products? Or everything. Okay. Or facial <laughs> makeup. Or <laughs> Is make How long every day do you spend doing makeup? Two hours. Two hours a day. Koreans have one of the most extensive skincare regimes in the world, piling on between 10 and 18 products a day. It's pretty mental right now. I've never seen crowds like this just come for beauty. Korean products' promise of perfect skin is fast becoming the most exported and desired around the world. Just from chatting to people, it's not just South Koreans that come here for beauty. I just met a couple of Chinese girls. They said to me that it's one of the best places to come and the best products are here. So I'm coming here to meet up with a girl called Ulyana. Basically, she is a girl that kind of epitomizes everything to do with mainstream beauty in South Korea today. And hopefully she can give me a bit of an insight on her life and the things that she does and the routines that she has within beauty. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good, thank you. And look at your eyes. <laughs> yeah, my eyes are purple, but your eyes, they're very beautiful too. Yeah, so yeah. where did you have done it? Um, I had it done at home where I live in London. In London? Yeah. Is it common in your country? No, it's no. not common anywhere really. Oh. I think maybe less than 100 people have it in the world. Oh, yeah. So not very many. So, Uliana, where are you taking me now? We are going to Moonshot. Moonshot? Yes. Okay, what's Moonshot? Moonshot is makeup store. Uh huh. And we are going to have a makeup over. Oh, cool. We're going to have a makeover. Yeah. The influence of K pop on young people in South Korea cannot be overestimated. And major K pop label YG Entertainment are taking advantage of that. They developed their own line of cosmetics to sell in their store in central Seoul, Moonshot. Beauty products were a natural item for Korean stars to promote. On K-dramas, surgery is often part of the plot. Well, Yana? Yes? What kind of look are you going to go for today? Heavy makeup? Yeah? Yeah. So like a typical K-pop? Yes. Yeah? Nice. With your parents, how did they feel when you started wearing makeup? I was in a 그리고 대학생 딱 들어가서 엄마 아빠가 메이크업 그 제품들을 사 주셨어요. 이쁘게 하고 다니라고. 그리고 굉장히 메이크업 하면서 이뻐진 내 모습 보고 엄마 아빠도 계속 이쁘게 하고 다녀라. Wow. I usually wouldn't wear this much like heavy dark eye makeup because I think my eyes are pretty intense anyway. But no, it looks really good. 
the K-pop star look is it's not bad. Ulyana offered to take me to Seoul's 24-hour, seven-story mega spa to show me that beauty isn't just about makeup, but a big part of Korean lifestyle for young people like her. So I've come to a spa in central Seoul with Ulyana. We're going to go and check out the pool and the jacuzzi. But if I'm honest, I'm feeling pretty nervous right now. Um, one of the ladies who guided us in here to the changing rooms asked me if I could change in a private room because of fear of everyone being offended from my tattoos. She asked me to keep my coat on. And yeah, already getting a bit of a weird reception. This is so weird. I don't know if they're more freaked out by my tattoos or the fact that I'm wearing a Burberry coat in a spa. Ooh, this is nice. I found out that more than 60% of young women in their 20s have had cosmetic surgery here. I wanted to find out how Ulyana felt about the issue. Do you think that girls in South Korea are getting plastic surgery too young? For me personally, um, a lot of the procedures that girls over here get when they're very young is pretty extreme, um, purely because of the age that they are. Done nose top. Mm -hmm. My nose shape was was not straight, so I make it straight. Okay. Anything else? I got botox every six months. I suck on my fat from my leg. Mm -hmm. uh, put it on my face. Where in your face did they inject? Everywhere. Everywhere. Forehead, cheek, and. Um, what differences did you feel were the biggest in your appearance changing? I have no fats on my face, so I look prettier. With these girls and guys who are young, do you think it's the pressures of society telling them that they should look a certain way? She's been really open with me about everything she's been through. But this whole kind of sense that K-pop has such a huge influence on the way young girls look, I think it's great to idolize people who you admire. But for me, for 18-year-old girls to start getting Botox just because they feel like they have to fit into this K-pop ideal almost, kind of made me feel a bit uncomfortable. that's really weird <laughs> is that there's just a big room of people yes. and they just they're asleep on the floor like randomly yes but then there's just like their parents are asleep and then the kids yes. are like playing around and stuff and they sleep here all night yes they all now and i used to sleep here every weekend with my fr friends Regime. How would you feel if someone took that away from you and told you that you could never have cosmetic surgery again and you could never wear makeup again? How would you feel? I will die. <laughs> really? Yeah? Yes. yes. I want to become prettier. This is a pretty bizarre place, if I'm honest. I've never been to a spa before that's open 24 hours. I've never been to a spa that has like an arcade in it. I'm used to going to spas or being in a swimming pool and maybe people looking at me funny because I'm heavily tattooed, but never quite to this extreme. You can tell that just not impressed by me at all. Um, I, and I definitely think it's got to be the tattoos and the stigma around tattooing. A few years ago, I wouldn't even been let in a place like this. Like I would be completely banned from coming into a, into a spa. 
It's clear that Ulyana reflects South Korea's mainstream beauty culture. While I'm uneasy that this billion dollar business puts huge pressure on young girls to look perfect, it's easy to see why so many are influenced, especially when K-pop idols themselves are having to conform to the very narrow beauty ideals. I know young women in the West are facing a lot of the same pressures. Although in South Korea, it's socially acceptable for teenagers to have cosmetic surgery, it is illegal to be a tattoo artist. I'm fascinated to understand how younger generations are challenging traditional views of beauty. I've traveled to South Korea to explore their alternative beauty industry. I wanted to know why tattooing is illegal here and meet the young Koreans embracing alternative ideas of beauty and body image.